Hey guys, Joe here. Just doing a quick video as I'm going to work here. And don't worry, hands are free. Uh, I wanted to talk about a subject that has always kind of confused me. And that situation is sunroofs in fast cars. I'm not just going to say sports cars because by definition, even a Mustang is technically not a sports car. It's a pony car for sure. Uh, you can go to, I believe it was car and driver and read the article they just put up recently so I'm going to not perpetuate the false stereotype of this being a sports car that being said fast cars with compromised structures is how I will put it a sunroof puts weird weight and structural problems into a vehicle what you're doing is you're taking a vehicle, which most modern vehicles are a unibody design, which means that the roof and the floor of the car are what basically give it its twisting rigidity. It doesn't have a separate frame. So when you cut a giant hole into said frame, you are creating a big problem. And what I mean by that is if you cut a hole in the middle of a steel beam, that beam will twist. If it's solid, it doesn't. So by doing that to your car, you're creating a situation where every time you do a hard launch or hard cornering, you're actually twisting the unibody. And on older cars especially, that can be really bad. I don't know how many of you have ever had a third gen Camaro, especially like an IROC with a 350 tune port engine. On those cars, they suffered from actual cracking on the unibody from just having a 235 horsepower engine. So you can imagine what a vehicle like mine with 420 horsepower does every time I accelerate hard or go around a corner really fast or just hard driving in general. So why would you compromise the integrity of your vehicle by cutting a giant hole in the roof? It just doesn't make sense to me. Now, some people will buy their cars and never drive them fast. And I understand that. And to those people, who cares? They just bought it because they want to say, oh, I have a Hellcat. I have 707 horsepower. I don't really ever intend to use it. I don't care. Fair enough. But if you're actually an enthusiast like I am and you like driving your cars like I do, I would never cut a hole in my roof. It's even more compounded when you do it with an aftermarket sunroof. Because when the factory does the sunroof, what they do is they leave enough material so that they can roll the material under, create a seam that helps add back in some of the structural rigidity that you lost. An aftermarket sunroof, for the majority, there, there are a few companies out there like, uh, I don't know if they're still called it, but American Sunroof Corporation, they actually used to do all the sunroofs for the factory vehicles. But most third-party installers and working for a dealership, I've seen some pretty shoddy ones, they just cut the roof, they might bend the edge a little bit, and then they just put weather stripping around it. Their rationalization is, it works. And for a Ford Focus, or a Chevy Traverse, or something like that, fine, that, that is actually true. But why in the hell would somebody take a car, like for example, a 2SS Camaro, with 455 horsepower and track suspension with the upcoming 1LE and then cut a freaking hole in the roof or allow a hole to be put into the roof. Not only are you compromising the structural integrity of the vehicle, you're also adding weight up high where it isn't optimal. So I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. Uh, that's my take on it. Please, if you have a rationalization that I haven't thought about, just put it down below and leave a comment. If you like the videos, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you don't like them, um, you can give it a thumbs down. But if you do, 